and good morning to Willow Hill and to everyone joining us for worship today. We are so excited to worship with you as we welcome week four of Advent with Pastor Nicole's message, The Light of Everlasting Peace, as the fourth installment of the sermon series, Down to Earth, The Mystery of the Incarnation. If you are new to Willow Hill, welcome. We are so blessed you've decided to worship with us, and we would love a chance to get to know you better, so please consider filling out the digital connection card linked in the video's description or comment new below the video. If you'd like to get to know Willow Hill a little bit more, you can check out our website, willowhill.org, or you can find us on social media through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll go ahead and link our website as well as our social media handles in the video's description. Throughout the course of the worship service, please feel free to like, comment, and let us know what you're thinking. We would love to hear from you. Now, please join in singing this morning's hymn. As our nights grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs in our wreath, the light of the candles and the green of the evergreen boughs to help us remember God's promise to our world. The prophet Isaiah says, the wolf will lie down with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the cat, calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither 
harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We live in a world where things are not as they should be. Our world has been flipped upside down. The news is filled with horrific things that happen every single day. And it is easy to get lost in the heaviness of it all. Selfishness, hatred, war. But we know that Jesus is coming. We anxiously await his return when he will rid of the world of all evil and infuse this place with peace. He will flip our world right side up. We light this candle, the candle of peace, as we await our Prince of Peace to return to this world and make all things right. Let us pray. Open our hearts and help us proclaim your presence. Help us to reach out to one another in joy and in peace. Remind us again that you hold each and every one of us gently and lovingly in your constant care. Bring peace to our hurting world. We ask these things in the name of the Prince of Peace, your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to heal and free us. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, may our voices rise up to praise you and thank you for all the gifts you have given us. As we await the arrival of your Son, May we not wait in passive anticipation, but Lord, help us to actively engage in being your hands and feet. Help us to build your kingdom here every day through simple acts of kindness, love, giving, and spiritual practices. Lord, this season can be difficult for many as it is typically a time of celebration with family gatherings and traditions. They make it all the more obvious when someone has endured loss and is grieving. We ask that you bring peace to those hurting and the understanding that they are not alone. Please place your healing touch on the ill as you walk beside them during their health crisis. And Lord, may you shine the light of love and hope on all of us as we lift our voices, saying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi friends, it is time for Small Talk. Today is our fourth Sunday of Advent, which means it's our last Sunday before Christmas. So I thought today we really should read a story about what Christmas is all about. And today I brought one of our fun stories so you can all join in from home and help me with the story because there's some repetition in it and by the time it ends, you'll know the whole story. This is a book called Where Jesus Slept and it is written by Norma Lewis and illustrated by Katie Hudson. And it tells the whole story. Long ago, in a city called Bethlehem, a very special baby was born. This is the bed where Jesus slept. This is the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. 
This is the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. This is the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. This is Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. I'm starting to follow along? Help me out now. This is the child, all swaddled tight, born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. This is the angel all robed in white that told of the child all swaddled tight, born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. This is the lamb that quaked at the sight of the holy angel robed in white that told of the child all swaddled tight born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. This is the shepherd who on that night tended the lamb that quaked at the sight of the holy angel robed in white that told of the child all swallowed, swaddled tight, born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. And this is the star that was shining bright above the shepherd who on that night tended the lamb that quaked at the sight of the holy angel robed in white that told of the child all swaddled tight, born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. Okay, got to help me here. These are the wise men who followed the light of the heavenly star shining bright above the shepherd who on that night tended the lamb that quaked at the sight of the holy angel robed in white that told of the child all swaddled tight, born to Mary, there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. But we're not done. These are the gifts for our king tonight, said the three wise men who followed the light of the heavenly star shining bright above the shepherd, who on that night tended the lamb that quaked at the sight of a holy angel robed in white, that told of the child all swaddled tight, born to Mary there in the stable that sheltered the cow that shared the straw that lined the bed where Jesus slept. Whew. Long, long ago in a city called Bethlehem, a very special baby was born. He was the Son of God. His name was Jesus and God sent him because he loves us so very much. And there's the last picture of baby Jesus. And this is a verse from the Bible, John 3, 16, that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So as we get ready for Christmas in a few days, and we think about gifts under the tree, we remember that on that very first Christmas, God gave us the best gift of all. God gave us this light that shines in the world for that first Christmas and forever in the love of his that came in the form of baby Jesus. Let's fold our hands and say our sentence prayer. Dear God, Thank you for lighting our world with your love through baby Jesus on the very first Christmas and every day thereafter. Amen. Uh, last month, Pastor Nicole reminded us of the importance of giving joyfully rather than out of obligation. November and December are enveloped in this blanket of giving. Year after year, we give our time, we give thanks, 
we give donations, we give financial gifts, and all of this giving, when we're able, can be so joyful and heartwarming, but it feels different this year. It's harder. Many who often give freely and joyfully don't have the ability to give for so many variety of reasons. And many who hadn't gone out of their way to ask for help before are now pleading for assistance to survive the turbulence of this year. Whatever your situation, I think we can agree that God is the ultimate giver. Discounting the many gifts and blessings from our day to day, God loved the world, loved us so much that he gave us Jesus, who lived and died for our sins. God probably isn't tracking his return on investment, but he has given so much to us. How might we give back? Thank you for whatever gifts you are able to share, whether you're giving your time, talent, or financial gifts. Your generosity allows us to continue to be the hands and feet of God. However you choose to give and to whomever, I am certain your generosity will have a powerful impact. Thank you.
Good morning, Willow Hill. Would you join me in prayer, please? Oh, good and gracious God, we are so grateful for your love. We are so grateful for your hope and your joy. And this week, as we light the candle of peace, we welcome your peace into our lives. Speak to us now. Meet us where we are, that we might hear from you this morning. Amen. Well, one of the things that really throws me off this time of year is how early it gets dark outside. I mean, this is nothing new, right? We've lived with us this our entire lives. And yet, come 5.15 p.m., I look outside and think, is it midnight already? <laughs> I saw this picture last week, and I've never related to anything more. I got a really good chuckle out of it. I hope you do, too. You know, the darkness can really throw me off. During these dark December evenings, I find myself longing for those summer nights where the light stretches late into the evening. But you know what? I think it's kind of perfect that it gets dark out so early during the season of Advent. It's really quite fitting. Because just as we long for it to be lighter in the evenings, I think we can find a parallel for how we long for the Messiah to come. That we need God's light in our lives. And what better time to remember than when we are sitting at home thinking it's 2.30 in the morning and really it's 8.15 p.m., right? <laughs> in fact, December 25th was chosen as the day for Christmas because of this problem of having it be so dark at night. Let me explain. Adam Hamilton writes about it in his book, Incarnation. He shares with us that back in biblical times, people didn't celebrate birthdays like we do now. And so Jesus' actual birth date has been lost to time. In fact, a lot of scholars think that Jesus was actually born in the springtime. Because if people were traveling for the census, that would have made sense. That would have been a good time of year to travel to their hometowns. But when it came to establishing a day to celebrate Jesus' birth, they chose December 25th. Why December 25th? Well, because before our calendar shifted to the one that we use now, December 25th was the day after the winter solstice. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the winter solstice is the longest night of the year. It's the day with the shortest amount of sunlight. So the day after the solstice means that there's a little more light than the night before. And it gains every day a little more light, a little more light. What a perfect day to celebrate Jesus the light of the world coming into our midst. That light breaks through the darkness at Christmas. Hamilton reminds us, Christmas is a celebration of light piercing the darkness. Today we are going to look at a passage of scripture that talks about Jesus' coming it's not like the stories we read in Matthew and Luke, those narrative stories that kind of help us picture in our mind the, the nativity scene. Instead, this is a more cosmic retelling of Jesus' coming. It's different, but it's really beautiful. So let's take a listen to John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Since the beginning of time, since the fall of humanity, there has been a great darkness. A darkness that has separated us from God. Our sin created a barrier between us and our loving, perfect God. A God who cannot be in the presence of sin or darkness. And so we distanced ourselves and enveloped ourselves in the darkness. We chose to live this way. With each misstep, with every poor decision, we held that darkness close to us. But eventually, the barrier became too much for God. He knew something needed to change. The barrier needed to be breached. The darkness needed to be dispelled. And so, on the night that Jesus was born, light broke into the darkness of the world. Light that people had been waiting for and hoping for for centuries had come. It was such a light that darkness couldn't overcome it, our scripture says. Such light that darkness couldn't put it out, couldn't corrupt it, couldn't make it falter, wane, or dim. The light showed us the way to live without the darkness binding us any longer. And we anxiously await when the light will return to this world and dispel the darkness completely so that only the true light remains. Because I don't know about you, but it feels like we are walking in darkness these days. Sometimes this world can feel so overwhelming, so heavy, so dark. We have problems bogging us down at every turn. Throughout the world, there is evil and violence running rampant. There are people who are in such need that they would do almost anything for one meal, for one drink of clean water. There are people suffering from all sorts of terrible illnesses. And far too often we read headlines of school shootings and other soul-crushing evil in our midst. Every time we turn on the news, we see stories of despair and anguish, stories of hatred, of people choosing to hate someone who is different from them rather than seeing the beauty in our diversity. We are walking in darkness, aren't we? Sometimes I wonder how we even pull ourselves out of bed in the morning. How has the darkness not beaten us down? Well, I think it's because we've seen a great light. We've seen a great light, and that light is our hope. Hope for better days. Hope for days when evil won't win out, but when goodness and mercy will. Hope for a light that will overtake the darkness for good, to conquer all that is wrong in this world with all that is right. And so we cling to that hope, don't we? We anticipate it. We wait for it, for that true peace that will reign forever. We wait and we hope. Of course we do. Because if we didn't, we'd let the darkness overcome us. But we cling to that hope, to the goodness in life, to love and peace and kindness. We see those things, and more importantly, we allow God to bring those things into being through us. And we continue living in this way, allowing God to move in us and through us, 
while we anticipate him coming to save us from the darkness that threatens to close in around us. We are a people walking in darkness, but we have seen a great light and we anticipate the day that that light will dispel all darkness. You know, one of the things I love most about this time of year is all of the lights that we get to experience. Oh, twinkle lights strung throughout our homes and and from our rooftops. Oh, there's just nothing like driving through a neighborhood this time of year and seeing all the beautiful color I often wish that we could keep twinkle lights up in the house year-round because they bring this soft, warm glow, and it's so happy. One of my most favorite traditions when I was a kid is when all seven of us, my parents, my brothers, and my sister and I would pile into a van and drive around town to see beautiful Christmas lights. It's a tradition that I force I mean, have my family participate in it now. Christmas jammies and hot chocolate and Christmas music and lots and lots of Christmas lights. There's just something about it this time of year, isn't there? You know what else brings beautiful light this time of year? Snow. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of you have a deep abiding hatred for snow. But hear me out. Think of it this way. When we have that fresh blanket of snow and the sun comes out from behind the cloud, what happens? Oh, it is so beautiful, right? It's sparkly and, and this brilliant light is reflecting from each of those tiny little snowflakes. It's like the ground is covered in white glitter and it is amazing. Oh, I love it so much. I love snow. (laughs) And for me, That inspires such a sense of wonder, all of that light being reflected off of the snow. I mentioned earlier that light this time of year is important because the darkness can really affect us. You know, many people have seasonal affective disorder, sometimes called the winter blues. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a seasonal depression that causes this feeling of sadness or this loss of energy caused by the lack of light that our bodies need. Uh, We don't get that light during the fall and winter months. And you know what the cure for this is? Light. It's light. You can buy special light lamps uh, that help you manage that disorder. Isn't that cool? You know, darkness affects us. It changes us. It's not just those who suffer from winter blues. It's all of us. When we feel the darkness of life closing in around us, we need to experience God's light. In the movie Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the headmaster of Hogwarts school, Professor Dumbledore, is giving this speech at the beginning of term feast. And he says this, he says, Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if only one remembers to turn on the light. Those are some really brilliant words, especially if we think of them in light of Jesus being our light, that we can find true happiness, true joy and peace, even in the hardest of times, if only we allow Jesus to dispel the darkness with his brilliant light. I've been reading through the Gospel of John during Advent, and I couldn't help but notice the number of times that Jesus is referred to as the light. It happens over and over again. As we heard in the first chapter, Jesus is the light who cannot be extinguished by the darkness. But later on, Jesus says this. He says, Jesus spoke to the people again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Oh, this promise from Jesus that if we follow him, we don't have to walk in the darkness of this world any longer. Instead, we can claim the light 
of life. And I don't know about you, but I want to claim the light and leave that darkness behind me. I believe that we need to cling to light as best we can. And then we need to spread that light as best we can. We need to remember that Jesus, the great light, will come again. And we need to anticipate that Jesus will keep his promise to us, that he will save us from this darkness-infested world and dispel the darkness with his love and with his light. You know, it's our calling to be the light of this world, to share the light of Christ with others. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, Jesus tells us exactly that. He says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus is clear. We are the light of the world, and we are to let our light shine before others, reflecting the love of God into the world. It is our duty to shine this light that brings God's peace. Adam Hamilton writes about this in his book, he says, in our world, you're either bringing darkness or light. By your words and deeds, you bring joy, love, and hope to others, or you take it away. You bless and build up, or you tear down and hurt. Life is either all about you, or it is about others. That is quite a challenge that we can either bring light or bring darkness, goodness or evil. We can bring peace or we can bring discord. When we think of it like that, the choice is easy, right? Of course we want to be bearers of Christ's light. Of course we want to bring God's peace. And so we must do the work that needs to be done. We must answer the call that has been put on each of our lives. We must love others and put others before ourselves. We must shine his light as brightly as we can. You know, we've been reading through this book as a staff, and we've had some really good discussion about it these last few weeks. But all the way back to our first week in the discussion, uh, Gina shared something that was so good. As we were talking about the mystery of the incarnation and how Jesus put on flesh and bone to live among us, Gina said, and now that incarnation lives on through us and we are called to bring the kingdom of God here. Wow, I had to let that soak in for a while. I pondered that for days, that the incarnation lives on through us that God dwells in each of us, that the Holy Spirit is in us. And as Jesus commanded, it is our duty to be the light of the world, to live out that incarnation of light in this dark world. Wow, that is some really powerful stuff, isn't it? So it is my hope that we will allow the light of Jesus to wash over us, that we might then reflect his light into this dark world. It is my hope that we will hold in anticipation not only the coming of Christmas and that celebration where we will celebrate the Christ child being born, but that we will also hold in anticipation the coming of Christ the King to bring light for all of humanity coming to show us the fullness of God's power and might and glory and that he will bring his everlasting peace to us. That we might hold in anticipation a time 
when this prophecy will once again come to pass that the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, will bring his light into the world and that the world cannot and shall not extinguish it and that all darkness will flee because of it. Come, Lord Jesus, shine your light of everlasting peace into our lives. Will you pray with me, please? Oh God, we are grateful for the light of Jesus Christ. We are grateful to know that you shine that light through us and back into the world. Help us to share that light, that love with others. Help us to do your work to keep that darkness at bay so that your love might be known by everyone. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, this worship service has ended, but your life in Christ goes on and on. May your peace be so real and your joy so evident that all who see you come to know God. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Please enjoy this glimpse of our Christmas Eve services as we invite you to join us for worship. favored one, the Lord is with you. Born of King on Bethlehem's clay. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Remember to sign up on our website if you plan to join us for the parking lot Christmas Eve services. We are starting a new tradition this year of star words. Just as the star guided the wise men to baby Jesus, the star word is meant to guide you in your relationship with God in the coming year. Pastor Nicole has prayed over these stars, asking God to get the right word to the right person, and you'll hear more about them in the sermon on December 27th. Pastor Nicole will be handing them out on the 27th at the church from 2 to 3 p.m. But if you can't drive up to pick your star, you can contact Pastor Nicole to make a special arrangement. Thank you to all who have signed up to provide Angel Tree gifts and to those volunteering to make deliveries. Gifts may still be dropped off at the church entrance Sunday, December 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. If you need to make other arrangements, please contact Jeannie Hewlett. With the church office closed for year-end gifts, we encourage they be mailed to the church office and postmarked by December 31st or online gifts dated December 31st to count towards your 2020 giving record. If you wish to drop off a year-end gift in person, please contact Kathy Thompson by noon on December 31st. Thank you to all who gave the gift of life at the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center Blood Drive at Willow Hill. Because of you, up to 54 lives will be saved or extended. The upper room devotionals are available for pickup in the drop box outside of the church entrance. Contact Gina Hewlett to have a copy delivered to your home. For prayer concerns, contact Gina Hewlett. For pastoral care needs, please contact Pastor Nicole Cox. Staff contact information can be found on our website. If you enjoyed today's worship service, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on our latest videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.